So I'm recording, FYI. So that's all recording now. You can talk and shit as well. Yeah, because it needs to have my voice in. So you. All right, this is a great start to the new year. Anyway, so 3D modeling. Um, so the first thing we're going to be to need to worry about is this yoke because we are going to be using this program on a 2D screen. We ain't got 3D screens yet. And this is going to be one of the weirdest things for you to try and understand that we're in a 3D space. One thing that I will always say to you is when you're modeling something, um, I always see this happen to beginners. They always look at it from the same angle and they forget to look at it from behind or from above. They just keep looking at it. Um, and then they go to rotate and they're like, oh crap, I moved the thing 25 miles over in the right direction. Because it's very easy, depending on some viewpoints. Um, and you're just screwed and you have to go and fix it all manually. So just always kind of like, if you ever see a professional 3D modeler, they'll do like a thing, rotate, and then do a thing and rotate and check around it. Um, it's literally like if you ever see, does someone do wooden sculpture? Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, they are wooden sculpture, wooden carving. Yeah. Um, they'll like do a thing and look around it and like do the and they'll keep looking around it. Same thing, same process. Um, this is, I don't know, some program. Probably, I don't know. I don't think it's Sketchup. It's like Blender or something. Um, so the first thing, Everything is made of polygons. Everything is a every face is a polygon. That's why I've given you those things, those paper cover things. I'll talk to you there about them a bit. But like everything is a polygon. So like see this is a cube, right? I'm gonna use this cube as my example. I've selected that face. So it's called a polygon, it's called a face. Some people call it a plane, but it's not a plane because a plane is a different thing by itself. Um, but it's a face or a polygon, okay? Um, and we, in 3D modeling, right now, we want to use polygons. Everyone knows what a polygon is, right, from, like, leaving cert. Um, we do not want to use any polygons above four sides, okay? We always want to go four, ideally four. If we have to, we'll go down to three. All right, so they are called in the 3D industry tries and quads. So quads is what we always want to aim for. Now, when I say quad, it doesn't mean it has to be perfectly square. It can be like a huge long rectangle or like even a, a rhombus, like, you know, all kind of weird shape. Like as long as it's for, I don't have this screen. Like this is a quad, that is a quad, this is a quad. These are all quads, so they're all okay. As long as they're like four sides. Um, we don't want to keep them too long and thin as well. You also want to avoid polygons like that. Um, you generally want to keep polygons in like a square-ish shape, but sometimes you have to stretch it. So yeah, just always try some quads, and I can't underestimate how important that is. What happens if you do a pentagon or hexagon or whatever it is? In Unity, it's not the worst thing in the world depending on what happens. If it's on a flat surface, Unity will just cut it up into tries. Unity converts everything to tries anyway, um, which is fine, and that's okay. That's not going to be a huge problem. The problem is if you start animating or you start deforming the pentagon, then you start seeing so a lot of like weird texture effects. I, I wish I had a picture to show you. I was trying to find one, but you just you will see a lot of artifacting and stuff. So you generally want to keep it always tries, always quads. Now we always want to aim for quads as well. This is a bit of an old school approach. A lot of people use tries only. There's literally a 3D program that only works in tries, 3D coat, I think. Um, but we are going to try and use quads as much as possible. The reason is later when we go to animation, quads are a lot easier to animate than tries are. Okay, well not a lot, but a bit easier to animate than tries are. Um, this may not make sense to you now, but just for now, you know, do the old school thing. I am the master. Do quads until you are until you know enough to go fuck you, Baz. I'm gonna do tries. You know, just keep doing drop quads as much as possible. Um, as I said, sometimes you'll get to a point where you can't and you must use a try, and that's okay every once in a while, as long as it's mostly. So as I said, tries and quads. Cool. Um, the other thing to remember is a polygon is one-sided. Um, a face or a polygon is one-sided. So if I make a, a quad, it will be invisible from the other side. Has anyone made quads in Unity? Yeah, so you, you've seen that, right? Like when you look from the back, it's completely invisible. And when you look from the front, you can see it. And it's only rendered one side. Now, you can use materials that render both sides, but the reason why we only render on one side is it's cheaper. Um, and it just means that the GPU only needs to render one side of it. Um, so if you put in a material that renders both sides, some people do that. Uh, for example, let's say there's a character that has like holding up a sheet of paper, right? 
if I just put the quad there and it's rendered only on one side, when you look behind, it looks like the character's holding nothing. Um, but if I put a double-sided material on there, you'll see both sides. The thing is, that thing now just costs like twice as much ish because it's rendering two different polygons. Um, this is, I don't know why I have that picture of that. <laughs> is that like, is it called vert or something? I guess. I, I know. The other one was a polygon, so it made sense. I don't know why this is. I guess this person is called vert. I don't know. I don't remember. What? Oh, is it? Okay, so. I was cool last year. I don't remember. Verts are the corners. So the corner of a thing, you can see that I have it selected there. Here. That's a little corner. That's a vert. Okay? Vertices or verts. Um, or no one really calls it corners. So verts. They're like the points. Um, and they can be manipulated. They can be moved up and down as well. Um, and then this one are edges. Oh my and God. Here. Th I know this one at least. Um, and they they are like literally just the edge of the polygon. Now the edge is the one thing you cannot ever make it like bend. There's no such thing in 3D modeling so far that's like a path that's curved. So what I mean by that, if I have, oh, can you all see this at all or not really? Kind of. Right. Um, I can draw one of these, right? Yeah. Is. So I have, if I have a point and a vertex and another vertex, the edge between them will always be like completely straight. There will be no bending at all. If I want to create a bend, say I want to do that and that, I need to have another point. So it needs to be able to go like that. So if I, if I ever need a curve, I need to have a point there. And this will become, not problematic, but this will become something you need to worry about. So let's say I want a corner that looks like this, and nice and rounded, that means I need point, 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 point. Because they're actually going to be all little straight lines between each of the points. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, now, and then we'll always have this push and pull. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but we'll have this push and pull between, we don't want too many polygons, too many points, uh, too many whatever. We don't want too many of anything for two reasons. One, optimization, because it works better in the game engine. And two, because the more shit you put in, the more you have to edit and deal with, and it gets harder and harder. Okay? So, those, as we said, can always be straight. By the way, I hope you've been realizing, but if you haven't, that's fine. See the right-hand side here? This is kind of like the interface you'd be using, and you see that this is selecting edges right now. And before, it was selecting verts. And before, well, okay, never mind before. I didn't have one for polygons. Did I have one for polygons? I did, yeah, there we go. I was not stupid. Here you go, polygon. So it's just selecting those different types. It'll look a little bit different in your 3ds Max. Did everyone get 2019 or 2018? 19? 17. 17? I literally said 2018 minimum, did I not, on asset design? Mm, not starting well. Um, also, I'll be taking attendance from next week on. From this week, it's like, fine, because I, you're all not sure yet. If you're gonna, uh, well, I mean, maybe you are sure, Paul. But anyone who's not sure has time. Okay, so edges, and this is called an edge loop. And what an edge loop is, is like, when you see this, they're all a bunch of it, like that's an edge, 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 but they're all linked together in a loop. Okay, so whenever I say edge loop, this is what I mean, like a bunch of edges all linked together. Specifically, I've chosen this eye thing to show you because um, you can see that it's following, if anyone's ever done anatomy or looked at a picture of anatomy, the muscles of the eye follow the same kind of pattern. And the reason for making the edge loop follow that is when I animate it, it'll stretch kind of like how a real eye would stretch as well. So you're trying to follow like areas of bending and stuff. This will make more sense when we actually go to start modeling stuff. Um, and I think this one is borders. And a border is when I delete, when I delete a polygon or face, I'm left with a hole, right? And you can see the inside. Now, 3ds Max will let you see the inside of this because you're in a modeling program, so it won't make it invisible. It will let you see it. But if you go and put this in Unity um, and you look at it from here, you'll see this one and you'll see that one, but you won't see any of these because you're looking at the back side of them. Okay? Um, so the borders here <coughs> is literally that hole. So if I deleted this and I select that hole, that's the border. And that's useful for, like, um, say I want to make a cup. I'll delete the top half and then grab the border and pull it up 
and now I have a cop that's invisible inside, okay? Um, and then this one is an element. An element is, these two are the same color, and you'll see this in 3ds Max, whenever you attach things together, they are, they'll kind of take the same color. If I have a, let's say, uh, like my, like my little model um, on Sketchfab, which I have closed, haven't I? Amazing, I'm a genius. Okay, if I have, like say those two cubes, right? This one, let's say I made this as a model, and then I made another smaller cube, completely separate object. So those would be two separate objects. And then I wanted to put them together because I'm like, okay, these two cubes will always be in the same spot away from each other. I'll never need to move them. So to make it cheaper uh, for Unity to read, Unity will only read one object instead of two. I'll attach them together into one object. Okay? So as far as Unity cares, Unity doesn't know they're two squares. It just goes, oh, it's one object. I don't care what's in it, but it's one object. Singularly, they're elements. Yeah. But singularly, they're elements. So even after I've attached them together, so this sphere is its own object, and these two cubes right now are one object. I can still edit each individual element. So this is one of the elements of the object. That's another element of the object. So anything that's enclosed away from each other is an element. Okay? Is that okay so far? All right, cool. Um, now, next thing we're going to talk about is high versus low polygon counts. So I've these have wireframes on them, so you can see this is the edge, that's the edge, this is the polygon. And this is literally how 3D models are made of. They're made of polygons. I've given you a sheet that is a very square Guinness thing, but that is a good explanation of how it shows up because like, I've made one here really badly. It's kind of cute, but that's literally what it is. This is a polygon. This is a edge. That's a vertex. Um, and you can see it's a quad. And the quad is stretched, but it's still a quad. So it's completely fine. Now, it is very square because this is low poly. It's literally made of one, two, three, four, five, six polys. That's all it's made of. So it's super, super low poly. Um, the higher poly you go, the more you're able to do with it. So I, I'd be able to smooth this around with a lot of polys. So it'd be like one, it could be like 32 polys around and it'd be really round and smooth, right? But then what happens is I start getting, uh, it starts getting more expensive. Now, nowadays we're pretty good with poly counts. GPUs are really, really good at dealing with uh, polys because that was like the big bottleneck before. Um, the exception is still mobile. So mobile still needs um, poly count to be very low. And it's always good to know how to do low poly modeling, even if you work in high poly because you're kind of like able to be as efficient as possible. Um, and low poly is always easier to deal with. So for example, again, back to this, if I want to grab one corner and pull that up to make a weird ass uh, Guinness thing, I can, I just grab this edge, and uh, sorry, this uh, vertex and pull it up. But if I had 32 edges around, now it gets a lot more complicated, right? Because I got 32 to deal with. Um, so that's basically the reason why. So um, obviously, as you can see, it gets a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. But we also have other tricks to deal with it that we will go over. So this is something called a smoothing group. Don't worry too much if you can't remember all of this right now. Um, but a smoothing group allows me to tell these people, like all these polys here, all of you should look smooth next to each other. And then this is a smoothing group applied, and they all look smooth. You can see it's still low poly, though. So if you look at the edges, and go back and if you're ever playing a game or look at any games that you used to play, go and look at the edges and you can always see these like little polygony shapes. And you'll start noticing this over and over. You start being like, oh, this is actually really low poly. Oh, that's really high poly. And you can kind of tell if something's low or high poly by the edges. So you can still see the edges here because as you remember, edges can only be straight. Is that like what Crash Bandicoot? Like if you downloaded it onto your like, PlayStation 3, the original one mm. PlayStation 1, you can turn on smoothing. Is that what builds? Maybe. I don't remember. Let's find out. Crash Bandicoot? Yeah. I had it on my PlayStation 3, but it was like a PlayStation 1 game. It was obviously before it the insane trilogy. So Crash Bandicoot smoothing, yeah? Yeah. Crash Bandicoot is like soft. So here is Crash Bandicoot smoothing on versus off. Uh, I guess I should full screen this. Oh, 
show me a model. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it is. I think, I think by smoothing they probably mean anti-aliasing. Okay. It looks like anti-aliasing because like the the one on the left is jagged edges and the one on the right is smooth. Okay, cool. Um, so I think it's a separate thing. That's I don't think that's unless I'm wrong. So look here. Is there a picture I can see? No. I, Exactly. Yeah. It's the uh, edges here. See, they're pixelated. Uh, well, they're kind of the same over there. The eyes are the same. I can't really tell, to be honest. I don't know. They seem the polygon seems the same. If you look at this, yeah. there's an edge and an edge and an edge, and that seems the same. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Does anyone see anything? Yeah, kind of. Oh. A very small amount on the end. If you look at the top of the end, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. It looks just like it really just looks like anti-aliasing. To be honest, I don't really know. You almost gave me something cool for the next few slides. I'm fine. That's okay. All right. So um, that trick makes it look smoothie. Okay. We will talk about that. We will deal with that. Um, and as this one shows you, um, it's a really bad example, but it does show you. Past a certain point, these are tries, these are all tries, but you see past a certain point, you don't really get a benefit for how much more polygons you put in. You don't really like. Um, and past, also past a certain point, if you want to put in really tiny, fine details, like tiny little bits, stuff like that, there are other methods to do it using maps. You guys saw normal maps, I want to say? You did already, right? You've used them before, have you? It's been programming last year. Probably. Awesome. We'll be going a lot. No? Okay, and I showed you in design practice, I'm, I'm pretty sure, but that was like two years ago. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Do you all want to take a little break here, or are you okay? I just want to pee. I mean, you, you can go pee, it's fine. <laughs> That's all, take a pee break. Okay. You can go pee, Hazel. Hazel wants to This pee. is going to be on YouTube yeah. forever. <laughs> he has to make that in. Oh, my God. Sorry? <laughs> Y'all can take a break. Who wants to get me coffee? I'm walking to the Are you using either room? Uh, uh, well, let me just pause the. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm boring you. I'm enjoying it. I didn't want to break. Oh, well, okay. that yeah, something. Yeah, it is a little, little tiny break. It's like a five minute break. Say what? <laughs> Nobody else remember that assignment that we got. Not assignment. It was a lab in the program that we had. We used maps. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Unity. It was the one, you know, the one where it was in this slug and then we had out with it for all the time. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Fun. Well, that was Yeah. yeah. Remember we had different maps, like texture maps, to make yeah. the planets look more realistic and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you definitely covered in tools. Tool? I'm pretty sure, tools? yeah, game tools is pretty true. Uh, with John, year one. Oh, in year one? Yeah, and, or even in design practice, I definitely showed normal maps. I didn't show it a lot, but I definitely showed it real quick. I, just, but it was real I, I remember quick, so. for definite when we did it with Keith for that assignment, because I remember it was it really changed the actual, like... Yeah, it makes it look a lot more detailed oh. than it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> the light bulb thing. I think so. You just change it to black and white and then slap it on. Yeah, it's a cheap version, but it works. Yeah, we'll do it again. It's fine. You learn normal maps again. I don't know about high maps. We'll see. Um, I'm looking at this YouTube channel called A Plus Star, and he's been doing like videos on different uh, characters, like he's been talking about their body count and stuff. Sure. They're nearly all with tries, though. So I was really surprised. So Unity converts it to tries as well. Yeah, no, I was really surprised when you said, oh, quads are better. From everything I've heard prior to like this lecture, it was tried like always so, like, triangles. In know? the old school days, everything was quads. Mm -hmm. um, I still personally, and I always teach that, and you know, tell me if I'm wrong. But everything I've still seen is like, the, even if it converts to tries, which Unity does, it's just easier to work with bots. You just have like 
for every polygon, you have one less edge to deal with. For simple as that. IMO. Whatever way works for you, but I, I definitely prefer quads. It's a lot easier for me. Yeah. Like Mario, and then he also goes in to see like if it's all one model or yeah. Has it been compared to like if like Mario's hat and his head? Or yeah. You know, or mm. stuff, like, Mario's hat in Odyssey or something like. Yeah, like he goes through all the different Mario's yeah. like way back to like the Nintendo sixty four and stuff. That's a good question. No, Mario's mm -hmm. Odyssey can't be attached to his head because it moves away. <laughs> Like well, it could be because it could you, they could disappear it and like send away a different prefab. They could be. I don't know. I don't know how it's done. Nope. Yeah, interesting. It is, yeah. I'm not like just looking at. Don't fire me. <laughs> Another YouTuber on about this is in Japan. He does a bit of, he does a, a show or a series called Boundary Break. I don't know how he gets these cameras, but he basically takes the camera, like that, you know, that would be attached to your player, and just moves it around the map to see what costs you want to see and stuff. It's really cool. He did one for um, Sea Fortress 2. And he now did Easter eggs that are like behind doors that you never yeah. even get to go behind, but unless you glitch through them, you'd see them. You should post them in Discord, Robin. People love it. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I'll do them. One of my favorite ones is the way um, Horizon Zero Dawn mm. handles their camera and the way they load their world. Mm. So, so it's basically, it's, it's only loading like essentially a full code yeah. and then like so much of a buffer either side. There's a GIF on, uh, hold on, Horizon Zero Dawn. Where the camera didn't realize, I think, I think Firewatch is the same where it only renders what, you can, what mm. you're looking at, like the direction you're looking at, but I got this where when I look behind me, you can go see There you go. That's really cool. Yeah, it just yeah. unloads stuff. This was in Rage, was yeah. one of the places they I first tried it. Thing. Yeah, but like it screwed up completely in Rage, and you could like turn a little bit oh, and yeah, see textures yeah. loading in. They didn't get it quite right, but it yeah. works really well in Far as Zero Dawn. Second one's. Not to be good, I've heard, yeah, I've heard it's really good. <laughs> they still have <coughs> a, they had a model uh, during their demo, a model popped in and it's Debo's. It was like, oops, that shouldn't be there. Yeah. What websites? That's a really cool. Kotaku. Cool. But like, if you just Google Horizon Zero Dawn um, optimization, okay. this one shows up. And there's like this video that's really interesting. I love seeing and here, models. stuff like this. Like, this is really cool. I don't know if you can. It um, so it, it changes the models from a sprite almost like it's well 2D image, and as you get closer, it replaces it with an actual 3D model. Yeah. Well, they they yeah. bend the image right so that it looks almost. Yeah. Well, they they it's called billboarding, so it always looks at you. But there is a new trick. Um, so you, yeah, you can read this. is really good. There's a new trick that Spider Man uses that's super complicated. The PS4 Spider Man. Every building, if you look inside, looks like there's stuff inside yeah, it. Yeah, I was wondering that because when you yeah. look at the buildings, it doesn't look like, oh, it's like a crap. A picture, no, it looks, it. It looks like it's 3D, depth in there. but it's not 3D. So yeah. what it's doing is it's a kind of shader that they have built a 3D room and then they recorded it at all angles kind of thing. Oh. And it's kind of almost a sprite sheet that plays. That's so amazing. depending on which angle, yeah, it's really amazing. So it costs more memory in terms of size of texture. But it's cheaper to render because GPUs can render texture really, really fast and really well. Whereas geometry is a bit more expensive. So that's a trick to use. It's yeah, really I smart. Like when you run up in the day, it's just the reflection of yourself in the building. But in the nighttime, when lights are on in the building, you can see the. Them. It's, it's, it's really like I think it's really well done. There's a, a really. In the view, like you can see when you're like on the top of the building, looking into the distance, you can see when the car cars and stuff just kind of disappear. Yeah. But it, it, it's really good. There's a bug one. I don't know. They probably patched it now. But um, there's I couldn't. I'm trying to find it. But there's a there's one where he crawls from one side of the room to the other, and it's two different apartment blocks because yeah. they have the wrong texture on each one. So it looks like a from one side it looks like a kitchen, and the other side looks like a living room. This is weird kind of thing. But it shows that it's not actual 3D miles inside. It's like a texture thing. It's Did very. You see the um, cool. picture that's going that's kind of gone viral. Sorry, no. No, it's fine. On IGN, 
if you go to YouTube or whatever, it's the Spider Man Boat People. YouTube. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, they didn't rent the property. Wait, Spider Man what people? Spider Man Boat People. Boat People. Boat yeah. People. Boat people. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go to YouTube. Go to, there's a video. <laughs> go to YouTube. Nice. Haunt my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> It's really hard because you actually can't jump onto those boats. You have to like swing over to the boat. Oh really? So yeah. like normally you're never able to get to them, yeah? No, you can't actually. That's amazing. Them. Okay, so yeah, this is the right side. That means I was gonna be like, oh, their LOD models never loaded in, but they probably don't have a higher. Oh, because that's, that's the thing. Like, you want to? I well, I can't get in the boat, and I tried ages to like land on that boat. Like to be honest, I'm impressed that they bothered putting faces on them. <laughs> Um, so Unity Unity will do this automatically for you, by the way. Um, I don't know if it does it for animated meshes, but Unity, if you have it set, when something goes further away, it'll do like a shitter version of the model. And that's called LOD, level of detail. Horizon Zero Dawn uses a lot of it. Uh, loads of games use a lot of it. Um, I guess this one doesn't have a high LOD model. So normally you would have it so whenever you got close up, a higher res model gets loaded in. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. Oh. This is like Goldeneye. <laughs> it is actually. Yeah. Look, they even have a normal map and everything. <laughs> they must just use like whatever. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. I see the dirt around that. Apparently, it's not official that choosing my job in Goldeneye. Uh, it's, it's it's, it is cheating, though. <laughs> Uh, did you see the Spider-Man thing with the, the yes. it's nothing to do with modeling, but it's like the different voices where you're swinging and you're talking to someone? Oh yeah, like yeah. A different, like, a different yeah. Um, it's pretty impressive. Like, it is. They did a lot of really little, nice little polish things. Like, polish is getting pretty, what it's expected from a AAA game, it's getting really high, which is why we're getting higher budget costs and stuff. I'm going to try and see if I can find that Spider-Man apartment. Uh, Honestly, I love the fact that have you played it then? Huh? Do you play the new Spider-Man? Uh, I don't PS4. Uh, that's... <laughs> well, yeah, you can, like, get no, your points. Like, you did, like, I had Toby Wire in the third movie. You try and, like, you run out of the street and you press the attack button, it's the death street, and he just goes, very good. Uh, very good. And it's great, and I love yeah, it. Yeah, any, uh, any enemies you get knocked over, they all stick to the side of the building and stuff, there and to... kill them. That's a, it's only if you hit them, so if you use one of like the, so say like you rip a piece of scenery off and you wing it at them and they go like pull them off the side of the building, yeah. it won't stick. <laughs> You'll just fall on killing them. No, so it's, like, it's not, well I, 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 I noticed because I was like, Spider-Man kicking someone off the side of the building, they fall down and it's like when they get yeah, to no, the that's what you're saying. No, that's what I'm saying. If, they can if you actually, the like if you, if the attack animation is them, him actually physically hitting them. Yeah. And they fly off, then yes, you'll see the wee animation of it. And then they will like fly up to the next thing. When you fall off the building, you Yeah. But if you know how you can, like, uh, I think it's L1 and R1, you can just pull like manhole covers or doors off. Yeah. If you hit them with something like that, it doesn't register it. Okay. And so it doesn't. So exactly. that animation never plays, so they just go. <laughs> I didn't kill him, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> the manhole cover. He's just your friendly neighbor. <laughs> Yeah, like I like all these Marvel ones have a like I got a problem with that because Batman doesn't kill anyone and Spider Man <laughs> doesn't kill anyone. Yeah, exactly. so, no. Let me just fuck a manhole cover into your face and like. <laughs> Didn't the last one have like the yeah non, the, the yeah the the riot suppression yeah the non the so, cannon on the, uh, on, the <laughs> on the on the Batmobile. Oh yeah, look at the controversial use of them in Northern Ireland. They're very much legal. All right, so um, on that dark note, back to the text, <laughs> text and stuff. So we've talked about modeling and stuff. There's a real, little bit more theory. We will go a lot more practical next week um, and this a little bit this week. Um, texturing is the art of actually, once you have the model, you'll the model generally will look like this, just as a base material on it that has no color. But we want there to actually be detail on it. We need to do something called unwrapping. So we need to unwrap the 3d model into a flat thing it is pretty terrifying so i'm sure in future there will be a point where we no need, longer need to really unwrap we'll be able to paint directly on the model but right now we still have to and because images are 2d we need to convert the 3d model into something that's 2d um so the box one is really easy you can see an example 
and it's just an example. There are many ways to do it. You can like have as long as the polygon is under, um, you can like arrange them around. But as long as it's flat, that's kind of like how you would be able to put a texture on it. So, for example, you can see. Uh, can you kind of see the colors on it? Yeah. All right. So, like literally, wherever you put a thing there. So, if I wrote like a big B here or something, that would show up on the top up here. You see, because it's like the top polygon. If that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't make sense again, that's why I have this thing for you, because hopefully this makes sense. It's a 3D model. I flattened it out. If I wanted the top of the Guinness to have something on it, on the 2D texture, I'd go to Photoshop or whatever it is, the substance, and I put a thing there. And then when I apply it back to the model, it has that thing on top, if that makes sense. Okay? Um, it uh, always, what do you mean reverse side? Sorry. Like, See the way it used to like. Oh, sorry. In this example, yeah, it is the reverse, but it, it should be the it's the top side. Okay. Um, the like way early, like an hour, early. like an hour early. <laughs> yeah, class up to eleven. Uh huh. Eleven. Okay. Um. So the more complicated the model is. You can see it starts getting way more complicated to deal with, um, and you will have to start separating them out into little pieces. Um, so this, each of these pieces here, you can do a thing called unwrapping, pelt unwrapping that stretches it, and each of this is called a UV island. So if I ever say, make sure your islands are separated or whatever, each of this is a UV island, okay? Um, and this whole thing is called a UV. And it, uh, they should not touch. They should have a little gap at least. Um, so UV unwrapping uh, or UVW maps are, I for some reason, I never figured it out why. I never bothered. You know the way in Unity you have X, Y, and Z, for the three different coordinates? Yeah. They use UV and W. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, But it's UVW, that's why it's called UV unwrapping. I have no clue why. Um, and if you've ever seen like these horror, horrendous pictures, that's literally what happens. It's like that 3D model face, they, they do like a cut and it's almost like if anyone's ever done hunting or seen hunters where you pull out the skin and stretch it, that's kind of what we do with this stuff. Um, and that's why you get it and it looks like a skin face because it pretty much hits. What are those things on the other side, like the face one on the top right? On the top right and yeah, stuff? Like are they are probably, um, I don't know exactly what they are, but generally they will be like the insides of the eyes or like the insides of the mouth or something like that, the red blobs and stuff, or the insides of the nose. Yeah, it could be any of those. Um, I'm not 100% what these ones specifically are. Um, but yeah, I also don't know why this would be. But yeah. Cool. So, and then you've got that one. Um, this thing is quite, e I found this quite easy to explain before because I always had problems explaining how unwrapping works and how a 3D model is can be converted to a 2D thing. And this stuff, it's Japanese, it's called Pepakura, and like you make shapes with it. Um, it's really cool. Uh, so the stuff like little EV and stuff. Oh, I don't have the actual picture. So it converts to a, like a little EV. If I yeah, that's really complicated stuff. Um, so like here's a little Charmander and stuff. And they have the free, the free what you call it downloads on them. Um, and you just print it out and cut it out and just make it. Um, yeah, you can create your own. Yeah. Um, also, you can make your own Pepakura. If you know 3D modeling, you literally just clone it and just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're excited about. Uh, okay, <laughs> fair. <laughs> it all pays off. Um, so like, yeah, you can kind of understand. Basically, 3D modeling is like a more complicated version of Paper Core. It is pretty much Paper Core. Um, Jess, we go higher level because we can't tiny things little things. Um, so this is really useful. I put the link in there. It's very useful to try and get like the understanding of how things work and, and hopefully it kind of makes it clear. That's why I gave you the little things. Um, so you can build your own little thing and understand. Um, I can't find the Eevee one. No. Wait, let me just check. Eevee Peppa yeah, it doesn't matter. Google will fix it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that one, that's this one, I'm pretty sure. So, mm -hmm. Oh no, wait, could be this one. I don't know, one of them. But yeah, you can kind of see how those polygons, you can even see the polygons wherever they fold. Every face, that's a polygon. It's almost exactly the same as 3D modeling. Cool. 
Um, so, oh, we will be doing shit soon. All right, so here is where we start talking about the normal maps and stuff, what I was telling you about making it more detailed. So this is a rock that I built uh, for like work. Here's just a mesh. It's very simple looking. This is diffuse and diffuse or albedo. There's two words for it. Albedo is the new version, the new way to say it, and diffuse is the old way. Diffuse just means the color, and it's the color. You can see the color, and it's got like drawn details or printed details, but they don't look 3D. They don't look like I can draw a scratch or a little dip. I can draw it, but it doesn't look like an actual dip. And then once I add this thing called the normal map, you can see they've got like actual scratches and tiny little details, and they just look quite a lot better. I don't know if you can tell the difference from the screen. Uh, so it looks a lot better. This one is a lot clearer. So without a normal map, it's like a flat texture with a normal map. Uh, this one has it like it looks like shit because it's been too shiny, but it's done to let you see the clearness. It kind of creates this trick of making it detailed. It doesn't actually add polygons. What it does is this weird mathematical thing. You see the way it's red, blue, red and blue things. This basically tells the light how to bounce and react off to it. I don't know how it works. It is magic. We don't care. And we just use it. And when you use it, you get something that looks a lot more detailed than it is. Okay? Um, obviously, you take it to the extremes. You'll see this one. The actual model is super low poly. It's actually really, really low poly. And again, everything's quad. See, there's a little try here. You couldn't get away with it. Uh, but most of the stuff is quads, just to be easier to deal with. And with a normal map, it looks so much more detailed. Like, if you were going to do this in polygons, it would be literally millions. Um, and that is a different method. Like you, you go to a high poly program, you do like millions of polygons and you can sculpt it and stuff. And then you render it onto a low poly model. But that's advanced. We'll do that later. Do we make okay. Maps or... uh, we're going to use two methods. We're going to use one where we create ourselves. We're going to use one where we use substance uh, that already has maps built in. Okay. okay? Uh, and you can stamp the maps as well. So like uh, the Brianna's knife that I showed you, that's got a little details that would be stamped on. It would be like, you know, like a normal map that you're just going to slap it on. All right. So, um, yeah. So, like, this is how it's used in game. You have the super low poly model, so it's very cheap, but it looks way detailed because of a normal map, purely. Okay? Um, and then we have this metalness thing, which I hope that you guys have seen in Unity. Uh, PBR. Like, have you gone through, like, what PBR is and stuff like that? Not really? Okay, that's fine. We'll do that as well. But the biggest thing to let you know about PBR is that it use, uses two things called metalness and smoothness to make it look like real life stuff. So this is 0% smoothness, 0% metalness. I didn't change the color at all on these. These are three copies of the exact same ball. Just this one has zero metalness, zero smoothness. So it's white, but it looks very soft. They're very fuzzy. When I add it to zero smoothness, so it's very rough and 100% metalness, it looks like this, and 100% smoothness, 100% metalness basically looks completely shiny. So what metalness is, is again, a trick for it to tell the object how to react to light. The more it's closer to metal, the more it reflects purely the color that it's being bounced on. So you see like when it's 100% metal, it reflects almost exactly the background. Whereas when it's 0% metal, it just reflects whatever color it is, right? Does that kind of make sense? And then smoothness is just purely like, is this thing really polished or is it really kind of like, uh, has does it have loads of little micro details, okay? So it's just kind of way, so this is the difference. They are all the same ball, just with different smoothness and meltiness. Cool. Now, if you put them all together, you get stuff that looks really good. So this is like the original model that's very low poly, has the normal map here, and then you add the color and it's already really good with the color, but just for that little extra bit, you see like the metal parts here. They're like, they're told to be, to look metal and uh, to be a little bit smoother. And then the parts that are cloth are told to be uh, not metallic at all because they're cloth. And putting all that together makes it look, you know, like a real, like almost realistic, quasi realistic stuff. Um, and that's a different map. Like the metal map uses black and white. And depending on how black or white it is, it's more metallic or less metallic. Um, and again, that, yeah? Hey, since that's like a top model, how could you change aspects of the on that one? Good question. So there's a thing called the metalness map, which is 
Let me see if I can find one online on the line. Uh, metalness map. Uh, okay, this may work. Does that help? All right. So you see the way, and this thing. This is the final result. And here, the metalness map tells all all the white bits. It tells the white bits to be more metallic, and all the bits that are not white to be not metallic. And that's basically how it is. And you remember when you unwrapped and stuff, it would be in the same unwrap. It'd be like you color black the parts you don't want to be uh, metal and white the parts you want to be metal. Same exact thing. So that's why the UV unwrapping is so important. That UV unwrap is used for the color, but also the normal map, and also the metalness map, and also the smoothness <laughs> map. It's used for all those maps. Um, now, in the old school days, when I started learning this shit, you had to manually do the map yourself. So you had to like go into... There was, a, there was a program called Quicksold that was kind of made it easier, but you had to like, let's say I wanted, oh, let's say I wanted the top polygon to be metallic and everything else not, I would have to unwrap it, do the color and stuff, and then I would have to go into Photoshop and then, okay, now I'm making a metal, metalness map, different texture, and then color this part, whatever metalness I wanted to, apply it, does it work, go back again. But now we got Substance Painter, it's way easier, and you'll see you just click on a thing and go, Make that metal, and it goes metal. And then it just creates a map for you after. You still need to unwrap properly. Um, sorry? The manual way is horrendous. It takes a lot of time. You do understand it a lot better, but it takes a lot of time. Um, so again, in Substance, um, sorry, in Sketchfab, whenever you look at a model that looks like it has metallicity and stuff like that, not all of them do. Some of them are just painted only colored. But if you look at it and it looks like it's got PBR, uh, you can always change it to what I showed you at the start. Change it to show me only the metal is not. And then you see like, oh, okay, that part's metal, that part's not metal, blah, blah, blah. That makes sense? Cool, cool. All right. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, and then, like, as I said, there's other different types of maps, but we won't go too much into those ones. We'll deal with just those, the metalness, smoothness, the normal map, and the albedo or diffuse map. Okay? Those are the main ones we're going to do. Um... And then 3D lighting obviously affects the model's colors. And this is something to be a lot more aware of in 3D than it is in 2D. Um, like these rocks almost look pink now just because they have a pink light on them. They will take whatever color they're shown on. Um, and we will, for the first semester, pretty much all of Asset Design 1, uh, maybe a little bit towards the end, will be this thing called box modeling, which is using very basic shapes and using the basic shapes to extrude and pull out into complicated shapes. So you can kind of see how this works. They kind of shaped it into a rough shape of a foot and then pulled out the little toes. Um, and that's kind of like, that's box modeling. There's there's high poly modeling, which we'll also cover later on, which is like millions of polys, and then you reduce it down later. That's the new method, and it's a different method. But this is very important to know as well. Cool. That's the end of it. I'm not talking anymore. We're going to go right to 3ds Max. But before I do that, any questions? We good? Mm -hmm. All right. I believe you. Okay, uh, we have one hour left. Just plenty of time. So I've got. I didn't launch Rudius Max. <laughs> All right. Will you be teaching us how to do, say, uh, like, another way you can do it where you set up your multi individual parts of your UV map to do multiple areas? So if you have like a model that has certain parts that have a good recurring texture, it's like tiling the textures. Yeah. Um, I'd say when we get to substance, we can do that. Um, depends how far we get, really. Like tricks and stuff like that if you don't know the basics you know it's very hard to use the tricks but we'll see how far we get um here by the way is an example of pbr and how it works so those are all the different maps that will go onto one thing to make it look like it's a realistic piece of rock or whatever um but again huh will we be focusing on making things super realistic then for this no not initially Initially, we're going to go very cartoony, very simple, and then we'll move on to realistic. So it's always easier to do the cartoony version first. Mm -hmm. uh, realistic always looks crap unless you get it really perfect. Um, 
Cool. All right. So everyone's got Max open, right? Coolio, coolio, coolio. Oh yeah, and here's like roughness to glossiness. Uh, glossy is another implementation. Unity uses metal smoothness. Um, other PBR PBR stands for physically based rendering. It's a new kind of rendering that came from movies. Um, but others use rough and glossy, but it's a similar thing. It's instead of smoothness, it's roughness and glossiness. But you can kind of see how it affects the material depending on how rough it is. And different materials use different kind of roughness. So like plaster will be very rough because it's plaster. It's got loads of little tiny details. And then a mirror will be very, very glossy, very smooth. Steel is kind of like here. Plastic is in between. So it's got a little bit of imperfection, but it's also kind of smooth and shiny. So that's pretty much tells you how to use it. And Unity literally has a PBR graph. Oh no, that's not what I want. PBR. Yeah, that literally tells you like, oh, if you want copper, use this metal, this, this, whatever setting. Come on, where is it? Do, 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 here. And it just tells you like, here are non-metals, here are metals rubber and mud, like how they look like. So as I said, the metal, it goes from black to white, it's grayscale. And that's how it kind of like, it's telling you, oh, wood should be slightly lighter, oh, it should be like this. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. And this is smoothness there. Cool. Um, so when you're in 3ds Max, the first thing you need to know is how to move around. So you should end up with a screen like this. By default, it looks like that. Um, middle mouse button and I forgot to say but y'all need a mouse I do not want to see people using Treatise Max with a touch I okay you kind of can but it's like it's I, let me try so you can move no you, how do you okay you can zoom in and out how do I how do I how do I can I know but we're doing it on a mouse pad Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know that, <laughs> 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 no, no, it's grand. I'm just joking. So yeah, middle mouse button to pan, um, alt and middle mouse button to rotate, and it rotates around either wherever you're clicking, or if you have something selected. So let me just make a little box here. Um, don't worry, I'll show you how to make boxes. If I have that selected. And literally selecting is just this or like selecting it you rotate around that thing okay so alt middle mouse button will rotate cool um, scroll wheel just zooms in and out that's easy enough and that is pretty much how you use the camera so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna try and use a sphere um, you can see here on the right hand side there are all these tabs here Right now we're dealing with just the create tab. This is the create tab, the little plus. And then later when you create, there's this modify tab. Okay. We're going to ignore all the other tabs for now. We're literally just going to do create and modify. So if I grab a, let's say sphere, I'll make a sphere. And if you click and drag anywhere, you'll make a sphere. Now, if you keep clicking, you'll keep making spheres. You may not want that. So if you want to stop doing that, just right click to stop creating. Um, and if you made too many, just select them and delete. click and drag to select of these. Cool. All right. So you can see this here is smooth and it doesn't have the wireframe, which is not useful for me if I want to edit it. I need to edit and see the, the actual edges. So the quick shortcut for that is F4. That's the quick shortcut. Um, or you can also go to see where it says default shading. You can right click and go to edge faces and then you'll see the edges and now you can see like oh this sphere is actually made up of tons of polygons and it has some tries at the top and this is what the sphere is that's how it becomes a sphere it's loads of little polygons arranged around cool yes yeah if your keyboard is not set up to use as you may have to f all cool. All right. So I have this sphere. I just created it. Um, Un uh, Unity. 3ds Max gave me a default sphere, right? If I want to change how many polygons are in the sphere, I can do this. I can go up to modify and making sure I'm selecting this. Because if I'm not selecting anything and I go to modify, there's nothing to modify. 
So I need, <coughs> excuse me, I need to select it, and now I can modify it <coughs> this here. Okay, everyone okay? Cool. So uh, no. Um, so you see where it says segments here? That is how I can just click and drag, or I can type in a number, and you can see I can add. This is a sphere technically with fuck all segments, or I can go. But you can kind of see. <coughs> let me turn off the edge faces so you can clear, see clearly. Past a certain point, the segments doesn't really matter. Doesn't really make a difference. Obviously, when you get really low, it does. <coughs> but, uh, I've got real bad. <coughs> I think it's that thing that's going around that gives you a really bad cough. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, um, so yeah, the segments are <laughs> the segments don't really matter past a certain point, and you can kind of see that it doesn't really do anything um, because we have smoothing on. If I turn off smoothing, you can kind of see that it makes more of a difference, and you have to go really high to get it smooth. But that's the beauty of smoothing. Smoothing will tell it to kind of look like they're smooth with each other. Again, you can go and Google how it works. I read it up once. I completely forgot it because it wasn't that important. Um, so you can turn on smooth and it smooths. Okay? So high segments, low segments. So I'm just going to set mine to like 12. It doesn't matter what you set it to. We're going to get rid of this here. We're just playing with this right now. Okay? And now I have this sphere. Job done. I have never touched anything below here. So I don't care. Uh, hemisphere sometimes, like hemisphere just literally cuts it off so you can create like domes and stuff. But uh, but I, aside from that, I've kind of never touched anything else. So ignore. All right, so I'm going to turn back on my edge faces. You can see my edge faces here. Cool? All good? All right. Now, this is a sphere. And that's all it is right now. If we want to edit it and squash it or change it into something else, we'll have to do stuff to it. So let's start with the basics. These are three controls I really need you to remember. If I ever see anyone using their mouse and going up and clicking the freaking control buttons, I will strangle a person. Because you do these three controls like all the time. So it's move, rotating, and scaling. And the shortcuts are W, E, and R. Exactly the same as in Unity. Also in Unity, if I see someone going up and clicking the freaking move button or the rotate, I'm like, you literally save half of your life just by going W. So W, there's move, E, and R. Okay? Sorry, do that one. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? W, E, and R. Okay. Word. So let me go to W first, okay? Um, on W, I'm moving, and you can see this like X, Y, Z, exactly the same as in Unity. If I hover over just the Y, it only moves in the Y. If I hover over the Z, it only moves in the Z. And if I go to the square, it moves in those two planes. And if I go to the center, it does in all three. Okay? It's exactly the same as Unity. E, same thing. Uh, it's locked in the direction if I hover and only grab that direction. Or if I click in the middle, I can do it in any direction I want. R, same thing. You can squish or squash in two directions or in all three okay so one direction two directions and all three R is the only one that's weird and this will happen a lot to you it still happens to me eight years on if you hit R and you hit it again you keep hitting R you see the way it's changed to this select and squash um, so there is this which is the normal one select and non-uniform scale if I hit it R again, accidentally, let's say I tap R and I hit it twice, it now squashes. Let me show you the difference. So when I squash, it keeps its volume. So like, if it's a ball of this much volume, when I try to squish it down, it acts as if it's real and kind of squishes out the sides. So that's what squash does. If I turn that off, if I just do a normal scale, it doesn't do that. It just squishes down. Okay? So in case you ever get to a point where you're like, oh shit, why is it doing this? It's because you hit R twice and just hit R another time. You'll be fine. Cool? Any questions so far? All right, cool. So we got move, rotate, and scale. Now let's say I want to move this um, to exactly the center. This is the graph, um, the grid, sorry. 
and there's a grid and there's like the exact center of two dark lines if I want to move it exactly to the center S is the shortcut or you can click this button here which snaps it okay if you right click on snaps you get to control what it snaps to so I can you just turn off what you don't want it to snap to and I want it to snap to grid points so I just click on grid points and just close that don't click on this this clears everything it looks like an okay button but it's not just close it and now you see like when I hover over the grids it's like oh, this little snap thing um, so now I can grab this and snap it to the center there we go let go and when you're done just hit S again and it goes away cool all G cool same with uh, rotation if you rotate normally you rotate freely so you can rotate as much as you want but let's say I want to rotate exactly 90 degrees or something there's two ways you can either type it down here um, or you can just hit A and you can see this turns on here or you can click it as well A is the shortcut and A will snap by five degree increments so you can kind of see it's very small the text but you can kind of see it going up and down by or you can see it in the bottom as well they both are telling you so it's going 90 degrees let go that's fine. You can, or you can also type in here. OG. And then same again if you want to stop the angle snap, hit A and it's gone. Cool. Awesome. Um, has, is everyone able to do all of those things? Okay, cool. Now, um, again, so far I can rotate it, I can squash it, I can move it, but it's still kind of a sphere. Even if it's a squash sphere, it's still a squash sphere. If I want to actually make it deformed and warp it and shit I need to convert it to something that I can edit so I'm gonna go up to the modifier list and everything in 2ds max works on modifiers so it's a sphere by default but I can add a modifier to make it editable <coughs> so if you click on modifier list come on buddy um, it's all alphabetical so if I type edit there we go and there is a bunch of stuff here here's a problem with 3ds max do you see this edit mesh and edit patch and stuff? They're old, old methods. They're really old, but they always leave them in there just in case. Um, because a lot of, I think because a lot of companies still have really old files and they want them to be compatible. But either way, um, try not to, like when you're doing an actual project for me, try not to play with all the other ones because there's some in there that are weird or, or like worse versions. Like edit mesh is a slightly worse version of edit poly. Edit poly is a newer one, okay? So I'm gonna do edit poly which is edit polygons. And now I've got all my selection here, which you should remember from before. If I click on vertex, you'll see that all the little vertices become blue and I can select them. And now they're red. Be careful when you select those. So let me look at it like this. And if I select like this, it will select all the ones behind as well. So just be careful. You can turn that off. You can use ignore back facing. And that means anything that's facing away from you, it's not selected. Okay, so that's off there. So when I want to edit the vertices, because I know how to use move, rotate, and scale, grab it and let you just move. And now I've made a weird little thing. And again, that's why I say look at it from all angles, because from here it looks fine, but when I look from the top, oh, it's actually off to the side, so I need to, you know, straighten it back out. So always rotate stuff. So there's move. You also never want to do this. Let me just do that. You never want to have like stretch polygons. These are stretch polygons. They will render weirdly. If you need to have something this long, you need to like cut more segments into it. But we'll go into that later. Um, so here's vertices only. Then I have edges. And again, edges will select anything I select will be all those edges. And then I have polygons. And polygons will allow me to grab different polygons and polygons can be rotated and scaled. Um, and finally, this one is for elements. And if you remember, element is like anything that's self-enclosed. And because I only have one element, it just selects that entire element. But if I may like say a little copy here, clone to elements, let's make that smaller. You'll see that when I select this, it's the same object. There's only one object in my scene view, but it's two separate small elements. Okay? And if I want to get rid of it, just select the element. Delete. If you have two elements, 
in an object and you yeah. like build it out with one of them to change the code? If you what, sorry? If you like mess around with one of them. No. To do that, you have to create something called an instance or or a reference, sorry, um, which is a different thing. No. So let me just make that an element. But I can close to an object, so I can copy to an object as well. I'll show you how to copy now in a sec. But right now I'm going to copy to an element. And now this element is kind of separate. So like if I do whatever it is, it's like its own little thing. They're just both part of the same object. Okay? So how do you copy is you select whatever you want to copy. I can copy just like one polygon if I want to. Hold shift and move. Shift and move will just copy that one thing. Okay? So shift and um, shift uh, well you have W selected already and then you just shift and then just drag it and it'll copy it. Okay. Um, another thing you can do with shift if you select something and hold shift and then do that. This is brand new. Y'all have this. I never had this. It literally will keep selecting all the way around until it gets back. So if I want to like select all the polygons around here. There's two ways. I can either look at it from this side and go like that, select, and then I got everything. Yeah, okay, that works. Uh, but sometimes for very complicated stuff, it doesn't. So I can do stuff like this, like click, hold shift and select, and it'll select all the way around. Cool? It's very... <coughs> what? Oh, to stop selecting it? Like to stop with the moves. Like you say you have W already selected with W already so I no I'm, I'm no no ask me so I've got W for move selected right and then your question is if I want to not move it yeah you tap W again oh because if you tap the <coughs> if you tap the R it would change it yeah but I haven't done anything to it as long as I don't touch the arrows it doesn't do anything to it uh, and if I want to deselect you just click outside click anywhere outside and it'll deselect okay everyone all good yeah. okay. Now, if I want to move the object, now here's a weird fucking thing, so be careful with this. If I click the element and I move the element, I'm not moving the object. So if I move this over here, that's fine, the element's over here. But if I go back to the object, you see the way the center of the object is still there? Because that's where the object center was. Um, so be careful about that. Moving an element doesn't change where the pivot point is. This thing is called a pivot point, and that's when you spawn it in Unity, that's where it spawns from. Which means if I spawn this in Unity now, the model will be like way off to the side. It will be really weird. So always be careful of that. Try and make sure your pivot points are correct. Let me just undo. Got to be real careful. It's so, it's so messy. Because then later if you start attaching stuff to it, and you need to move it, and then like the colliders are in the wrong spots and stuff. So you got to be really careful with that. <laughs> so like for example if I wanted to spawn this sphere on the ground and I wanted the sphere to spawn on top of the ground I could move up the elements so it's like this turn off element and you can see when I'm selecting it the spawn points up there so it'll spawn like that it'll be on top of the ground otherwise the other way would have been halfway into the ground does that make sense so pivot points are really important you can also edit the pivot point there's a way you go to the hierarchy and you affect the pivot only and you can change where the pivot goes and then you turn it off and that's done. That's the the Usually when you create something the pivot will be in the center. Generally. Of that object? Or the of, that object. Of, the... of that object. Generally it'll be in the center. And if, let me make another, you can also attach stuff to each other. So let me just make a box here. This is a completely separate object. You see for this one the pivot points in the bottom. So it just depends on what shape you make. For some shapes, 3ds Max is like, oh, it's a box, so the pivot's on the bottom. Um, and some shapes is, oh, it's a sphere, so the pivot's in the middle. You kind of just get used to it, of like knowing where it shows up from. All right, so I go back to the sphere. These are two separate objects. And you can see here, box 001, sphere 001. You can see them there. You can rename them here as well, I'm pretty sure. Can you do it here? Right click, rename. Or you can just go here to the modify and rename them. Uh, um, and they're there. So there are, there are two separate objects. When I bring them to Unity, there will be two separate objects. Um, if I want them to be the same object, I can attach them. So you can go like right click and there's attach and just click that guy. Now you see they both came to the same thing. But is that not an object now? That is one object now. And the pivot point has not moved. So when it spawns, it'll spawn still from the whichever you choose to attach to. That's 
it will retain that pivot point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of shit. So if you just want to try messing around with the edges and vertices and polygons for a while, just to get used to how that works, that's uh, it's quite an important thing. Just try and get used to that. I just copied it. So I just selected an element, clicked on that, and copy is shift drag. When you shift drag, you have a choice. You can either clone to a completely different object, okay. or you can clone to an element, which means it stays part of the same object. All right. So I would just clone to elements. Oh, the final thing is border. For a border, you need a hole. So if I click border and select, I'm not selecting anything because there's no holes here in my match. Um, I'm going to click this polygon and delete it. Now I have a border. Way. And I can move that, rotate that, oh well, scale it, and rotate it. So they're all rotatable. You see the way it's kind of dark inside? And that's kind of treated as max a way of telling you this is the back face of it. Now you can still see it, but if I render, just do a quick little render, you see the way it's invisible? On the inside, you can't see it because polygons only render one way. From the other side, I can see it completely fine. It's fine. That's shadow. Here's shadow. Um, here we go. So you can see everything. If I look at it from here. You don't see it. It's invisible. Cool. So the polygons are only one-sided. You see the, the box there? Can you see the way the, you, you, you delete the border, you made a border? Yeah. You see if one of the polys like the faces of the box, can you just scale that in and out like you did with you, the... I don't... What? Scale the border in that? No. You see the way the border almost looks like a cup. Yeah. Yeah. So can you do that box even though that the box has no border? Does that make sense? So I grab the face of it and scale the face? Yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, um, now here's another thing. When you have the a border selected or an edge, this only works for borders or edges. So let me restart this. If I select a face, if I hold shift and drag to copy, it just creates a copy of the face. Okay? So that's fine. If I select a border or an edge, I have this border selected. If I shift and drag, it creates new polygons. See that? So I can create like a tunnel thing. I'll rotate that, so I'm, I'm making like this weird chimney thing uh, because I'm selecting the border. If I just select an edge, same thing, except it only does it for one edge. So I can do that. And that. Shift drag. Selecting either an edge or a border. And that. Cool. Again, this is the back side of it. So if I render, they don't show. So you gotta be careful about that. So I'd have to close these later. So I've done something really stupid here. Is there not a thing you can do that? I can close up the face. So let's say I want this and it's done, and I want to close it up. I can select the border here. And there is a cap, and that caps it with a polygon. Polygon just showed up there, see? Now it's there. Can. There's a few methods. You can either select a material that's double sided, yeah. or you can copy it and put like another thing right above it and flip it. Okay. And that kind it's of. Much yeah, but it's less efficient. Is it? Yeah. Slightly less. Um, and then we'll go over this next week, but the stuff like you can do with insets and extrudes, so you can make like a little thing like that. Yeah, there is, it, yeah, it's all, it's very similar in a lot of programs. There's extrude, there's bevel, which does this. If you click and drag, let go, and then click again, it creates like a bevel. So like, they're all in this added polygons thing. And these change, by the way, depending on what selection you have. So if I have vertex selected, it's edit vertices instead, and it doesn't have the same stuff that you have in edit polygon. Okay, so stuff like here. Um, and then there is 
is yeah. extrude, we'll just extrude that. So that's kind of like how box modeling works. You kind of pull things out of each other. Um, flip, by the way, is what you are asking. So if I flip this, this is now backwards. That's facing inwards now. And it's invisible. I can flip it and it's back again. What's not working? Yeah. Um, um, oh. mm -hmm. All right. Um, are we all G? Cool. Oh, yeah. Two things. Number one, I forgot to save. It's just that I have got used to control lessing every so often. All the same, because shit crashes. Um, so make sure you control less all the time. So let's do some housekeeping before we move on to the next part. I'm just going to save this as like whatever. Box. Save. Um, and control S every so often, okay? Um, we are done with this thing. Sorry, what? No, you see the way the wind, you've got your window set up. Yeah. Is that a certain layout? Or is it just how you it's the default layout okay. perspective. Um, you can go to orthographic as well, like this, U, and orthographic shows you, like you can, so you can see stuff exactly from the side. No, I'm talking about the layout of like the hierarchy of toolbars and stuff. Oh, it's default as well. That's default. Yeah. Okay. Um, with orthographic, you can click on this little cube here that brings you to exactly the front. And it's looking exactly at the front or the right or whatever, and it looks exactly. That's with orthographic. Uh, orthographic is U, and perspective is P. Perspective is the normal one, so you can, it kind of like fakes perspective. Okay. Or you can right click here as well. So orthographic or perspective or any of the other cameras. If you ever get lost off screen, so like, which happens a lot. And you're like, shit, where the fuck is my model? Especially if you're really far away and you just have no idea where anything is. Just, you, it's in your scene hierarchy here. So click on that and hit, I think it's Z to zoom and it zooms to where the model is. Did that work? Uh, yeah. I did the TV down the bottom of the way. Oh, the, one of the... Yeah, 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 yeah you can... Yeah, there's, it's the same thing, same, same thing. Yeah. Or just hit Z. Select it in the thing and hit Z and it'll zoom in onto it. So again, if it's far away, make sure you just select it in the scene hierarchy, Z, zooms. Done. Cool. Any questions before I move on? All right, I'm going to delete this now. We're going to start, we're going to save. Make sure you save it somewhere. It's an empty scene right now, but just save it because we're going to build something in it, you know? And I'm also going to set up 3ds Max to make sure it's correct. Um, so mine is set up, but yours probably isn't. So this is the boring part, but we only need to do this once ever. Once this is done, we don't need to worry about it. We're going to go to Customize. And the first thing we're going to do is Unit Setup. Make sure it's on Metric. Customize up here on the menu and then unit setup and go to metric. I'm going to close the door. Is that okay? It's quite annoying. Huh? System, then after you're done with this, you need to go to system unit setup as well. And make sure that one unit is one meter. Again, you just need to do this once, and Mac should be fine for you from now on. Now, what this means is if you set this up correctly, that means one unit in um, one meter in in 3ds Max will be the same exact as one unit in in Unity. So they'll be the same <laughs> one meter by one meter, which makes it really handy. If I'm if I'm going to be like, I want to make a rock, it's going to be two meters high. Because you set this up, you just make it two meters high in 3ds Max, and when it goes into Unity, it'll be two meters high. Okay? Um, so just make sure that's one meters. Okay, okay. All good? All right. 
we need to do a little bit more stuff. So again, customize, uh, no wait, we've done that. We need to go to the snaps. Just right click on snaps. It's weird that I, you go to snaps. Just right click on the snaps toggle. And snaps is here, but there's also home grid. And you can see the grid spacing is every 10 meters. We can change it to every one meter. And that means every of these boxes right now is 10 meters. But if I set that to one meter, it gets really small and close that. And now each one of these little squares is one meter exactly, which is very useful to me if I want to check my scale. Um, and you can test that by creating a box and just making it like. So you can see, like, if I make it one meter by one meter by one meter, it fits exactly in the box. Should do. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's perfect. So now our units are set up. There, anything I make will be whatever meter it says in Unity as well. Just that's very cool. That you should not have to now that we've done it once. Be careful if you open a file made by someone else that has a different unit, it may revert to that unit and you may need to convert it back. Mm -hmm. It usually will ask you though. It usually goes, this file is in a different unit size, do you want to, you know. Um, so we've done the units thing. Now the only other thing before we can make stuff is we will need to make sure we have autosave turned on and we need to make sure that we have um, scene undo levels, which is like undos basically, like in Photoshop when you control Z or Unity when you control Z. So I don't remember, but I think that's in preferences, customize preferences. Yeah, it is. So, my freaking general here, scene undo levels 20. That is crap. 20 levels means I can only undo 20 times. In 3D modeling, you're going to have to sometimes undo like 100 times because you literally every move is one move. So, like, if I just went like click, 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 I've done like 20, and I'm like, oh crap, I need to undo 20 more than 20, it can't. I put it up to 500 because why not? So that means that I can undo 500 times. Every time you make a move or do a thing, it just deletes the 500th oldest one. Okay. It just it saves 500 patches. It's the same as any undo. Um, so that's fine. And then we'll go to files. And you see where it says auto backup here? Enable that if it's not enabled. The number of auto back files is like how many backups it saves and the inter interval is like how often it saves a backup file okay um, so I have mine on five minutes you can have it on two uh, I wouldn't go lower than two minutes because it, it'll save too much then um, as in it'll save too often and every time it saves it kind of slows down a little bit so I have mine on five you can have it whatever but just make sure you have that enabled what that means is in case your computer cuts out the lights turn off previous max crashes it at least saves something from five minutes ago and it's got three copies so you've got stuff from 15 minutes ago 10 minutes ago five minutes ago and it just keeps replacing them. does that make sense um it, re it saves them in a place called uh auto back so it's in wherever 2ds max is installed so program files autodesk 2ds max and there should be auto back here and it'll start saving them in here okay so i'm gonna hit okay that is safe. So in case of any problems, if it crashes, you should have a backup saved. That's all the housekeeping we need to do for now. And now we can actually make, we only have like 10 minutes left. Uh, we kind of need to finish in about 10 minutes, but that's okay. The only thing we need to do now is we're going to make a crate. The first thing we're going to build is a crate. We're going to texture and stuff as well. And we're going to continue that next week. Um, but a crate is just literally a box that's really simple. So I'm just going to click and drag. Make a box. How big should it be? A mirror? Yeah. So a mirror will be like that high? Or that high? Okay. So just change it in the proper in the parameters or in modify, it doesn't matter. One, one, one. The other thing you can do is change how many segments is in it. So you can change, you know, same with the sphere. And it just adds more segments, either the X, Y, or Z. But we're going to just keep it at one segment each for now. And then snap it to the center of the grid. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. You should know. And save it. Okay. 
just gonna make a little folder to save it in and box cool and if I want to edit it what do I do if I want to edit the actual box um, and instead of just squashing and stretching if I want to edit the actual polygons or vertices what I got to do I got to add a modifier so I got to go modifier list make sure you select it make sure you go to modify tab go to modifier list and we are going to go to edit poly huh? you can do that uh, the other option is uh, you can right click convert to edible poly but you lose the box it collapses everything into an edible body so you can do either it doesn't really make a difference um, and if I select a polygon I'm gonna do a couple things it's not that hard I'm gonna do an inset click in oh my god inset so it still looks exactly the same so it looks completely flat I've just made a polygon inside inside it but if I extrude it now, I can either extrude out, but I actually want to extrude in. And you can kind of see that I have, you know, one side of a crate. Like, you know, the crates that have metal bars on them and they're wooden inside. Yeah. All right. So I've made that. OK, so that was an inset and then an extrude, but I extrude it inside. Now, the problem is I've done that for this side. How do I do it for all the other sides? So they're exactly the same. So, they're exactly the same. so if I click on one of them, I know I did inset first and then I did extrude. So if I want it to be exactly the same, instead of clicking the word inset, and this is always the case in 3ds Max, if you see a word and it has a little tiny square to it, the square is always the settings. If I click settings, it remembers what I did the last time. And it's a bunch of settings here for like uh, how it insets and like how much it insets, but it's remembered what I did the last time. And I just need to hit tick. Awesome. Same with extrude. Extrude in, tick. Awesome. Yeah, that that's tough. And it only remembers it's the last a lot handier. Thing. It only remembers the last thing. So if I did a different inset now, it would remember the that new one. Okay. Now, again, I can keep doing this. Click, insert, extrude. Click, insert, extrude. I can keep going on, but I will show you the quickest way, which is, let me just select all the ones I need to do. Just all of them here. Okay. Selected all of them. I'm going to go to inset again, the settings. Now, here's a problem. If I inset... They all inset all together, so it's insetting them all as if they're one. But because I'm on settings, I can change it from group to by polygon. So inset by polygon. Then click tick, and then I need to extrude. They all extrude in. Perfect. I've done the entire box. Took me like a minute. I didn't have to over it from one year again. When the extrude, no, because they're all separate already. Uh, but you can, you can, you can do this. Um, Pretty sure that extrude has that setting here. Yeah, instead of group, it would, but because they're separate. So uh, let's make it. If I select these two, it may be easier to see. So if I extrude, it extrudes them both together. And if I do it by local, it's each one individually. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, very quickly, yes, because I need to close up now. Um, on which part? Okay, I'm gonna delete my entire. I'm undoing all the way back to the start, which is not working. Oh, did I not change my scene undoes? Hmm. Oh my lord! And this is why you do 500. I think I didn't click OK or something. OK, there we go. Well, too late now. I can't. I need to make a new box. And this is why you have the 500. Because 20 is not actually that much. I did that on purpose to show you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. Uh, set one in a second, says the dog. Oh, yeah. You saw a second dog? BT Dobbs, this is still recording. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to inset here. Oh my God, it's a bit awkward sometimes. You just click and drag the inset. Or if you're finding it too awkward, just hit the settings and you can control it a lot, fine, a lot finer here. Um, you can even type in numbers. So that's the inset. 
and then I'm going to extrude and you can either do it manually with your click and mouse or you can do it here 1.1 cool and then once you've done that you can do it individually to all of this so again select everything else that I need to do just make sure I don't select stuff that's already done why would you do that? By accident, it'll just insert that as well. Again? Yeah. Like, if I click, if I accidentally select that and I insert again, it'll just insert that one again. Oh. So I don't want to do that. So, oh, deselect. Sorry. If you want to select something that's not selected, control click, and you want to deselect, alt click will deselect. Completely forgot. So, insert again, and then because I, want to, I don't want to insert all of them at the same time, I click on group. So I insert each one individually. Done. And extrude individually. Done. As I said, this is recorded. Um, if Robin reminds me, or the new class rep, Hazel, if either of you remind me, I'll post it up on, I'll try to remember to post it on myself. But just, if I haven't, remind me. And I'll post up the video on the playlist. You all know where the playlist is, right? It's on Classroom. i link the playlist, I think. Which Classroom? It's on Discord that I put on the classroom. I'll be communicating a lot on Discord with this. Okay. All right. Uh, this is awesome. I because I couldn't get logged in all the time. Uh, what was the two websites? One other than my Sketchfab. All right. So it's on Discord. Asset Design. It's an Asset Design channel. You literally never go on Discord, do you? I it's like okay. asset design right here. Do start getting into the, the, the habit, but it's like, um, yeah, it's like your third year asset design classroom code here. Post it up, post it again. When did we get the you yes, cool. All right, I can stop the stream.